Wayne, you don't have Trace around uh, on the court. You still obviously have him at home. But uh, what's it like now to coach a team without him? Well, it's been, you know, kind of double-edged. The first day driving in there, I've got to be honest with you, um, I sent him a text and said, this is going to be a real punch in the gut to take the court, um, you know, without you. But then uh, on the flip side, you know, it's uh, kind of an added excitement to, you know, give the next wave of guys the opportunity uh, to lead. Obviously, you know, th there weren't any pressures, but things we had to deal with being father and son, um, you know, I'm sure you can imagine across the, the whole gamut that we're not going to have to deal with anymore. But, you know, just having that guy, those those closing timeouts with, with the game kind of weighing in the balance, knowing, uh, you know, that you know, he's not going to be there um, is tough. But we're excited about the guys, and you just spoke to one of them, um, that we do have that, that are going to be able to take over uh, those roles. And uh, I'm thrilled to see, you know, who takes advantage of that. And as we move forward with this season – um, and continue to develop the group. You know, one quick thing to just put a bow on it, and I'm sure we could talk for hours on it. Uh, you at least got to complete the regular season with him and get a senior night uh, at home. Uh, not everyone was able to fully complete, you know, obviously we didn't have the full postseason of the NCAA tournament, but can you at least just, you know, encapsulate what, what that meant to at least get that full regular season uh, with Trace on the team? Yeah, I mean, it was great. We, we had a great uh, weekend. And here to close things out in the regular season, big win against Stanford on Thursday and then Cal uh, on true senior night and, you know, celebrated with Kyler's family. Um, our family uh, was pretty special. A lot of friends, a lot of my personal friends and a lot of Trace's friends, uh, you know, from the Northwest and Montana came to be a part of that. Uh, it was pretty neat. Uh, and then to, you know, carry that momentum into the tournament, um, you know, Utah obviously gave us a heck of a game. It was crazy. But to come out on top, um, we really felt like, you know how big you've been around long enough. Those kind of wins on that kind of stage can really catapult your team moving forward. And, and I know you were talking with Ethan about that. Uh, it was a tough way to end it. But, but you're right. We were blessed that we're able to uh, enjoy senior night here and celebrate he and Kyler um, and, uh, along with the rest of uh, Beaver Nation. It's great. Yeah, it's when you think about that game and then the weekend before USC, USC UCLA, uh, the last couple of games, some of those last couple of games of the Pac-12 certainly lived up to the hype. All right, so we heard from Ethan. Um, what's going to be or what do you hope to be the, the identity of this group? Uh, it's got to be uh, a defensive-minded team, uh, that toughness um, that we're looking to develop. And, and the tough thing is we only have three players that have been in our program more than a year. Um, you know, and it's Ethan, Zach Reichel, and Alfred Holland. So we've got a lot of new guys, some young guys, but some mature guys that are just new to our program. But we've been working from day one on becoming that defensive team that we've been in the past here at Oregon State um, that has allowed us to have, you know, the success we've had. So that, that's going to be it. And I think we're going to be able to do some things differently defensively that will hopefully help uh, create some more offense for us going the other way. And uh, Ethan touched on some added depth and talent, athleticism and length uh, is going to be a strength of ours. Um, and I know uh, not too many people are familiar with maybe some of the new guys that we have, but that combined with the work that our returners put in in this offseason has us very excited. So, Wayne, I asked this to Kyle Smith and I said this to, to Ethan, uh, Corvallis and Pullman do share uh, the fact that you know, when you look at the 12 Pac-12 schools, uh, they're probably the most or the smallest and most remote and the ability to bubble. I know the virus goes everywhere and it is everywhere, but how have you been able to at least create a bubble within a bubble in Corvallis? Well, we've got great training and medical staff here at Oregon State. Obviously, the leadership that's been provided to us by our administration has been incredible. Uh, I've got to give a, a lot of credit beyond that to our student athletes. Uh, They've done everything we've asked them to do from last March till this point, you know, protecting themselves, social distancing, wearing their masks, uh, being smart at night when they're not around us, when we can't necessarily control them. And, and so to this point, we've stayed very healthy. Um, but I do have to give a lot of the credit to, um, you know, the people that kind of put the protocols in place um, and then our guys for following up on what's being asked them of them to do.